All right, welcome back. We have another move for you. We're working on the Huntai Senkaku, opposite side. When the guy starts to defend the traditional Amonte Senkaku and they have their arm locked under your hip, it can take away a lot of your mobility. This is a good option when you're training from this. So let's start from the typical Amonte Senkaku, the front triangle. And in this instance, Sway, the goal, the goal for me is to get Sway's arm either across my waist or at the very least on this side of my hip but not locked around my hip. As soon as Sway locks his arms around my hip, I lose all mobility, all lateral mobility, particularly moving my head to the right. As I do that, I find out very quickly that my, my hip is locked into a set position. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna control the head and with my free arm now, I'm gonna start to reach under his leg. Now my goal here, is to swing my body so that my left knee, if you notice my left knee, in this case, is facing down towards the mat. This is essential. We're gonna get our knee so it's facing towards the mat and under his lat. If my left leg, in this case, is parallel with his upper back, I'll never gain the proper leverage to actually strike. I'm gonna put him out. So we need to make sure that our knee is facing this way. My usual uh, rule of thumb is like, if I'm in a position where I feel like I'm at roughly a, a parallel position, I usually can get it or if I can touch my toes to the mat. So from here, with my right hand controlling his posture, I can now place my free leg behind the head. This acts as a closed wedge. If he goes to posture up, even without my hand, I can hold him in position. Now it's just a matter of pulling my own leg as tight as possible, called a hand assist, and then locking on the full-on strangle by closing up behind his head. Get a very tight finish. So again, I'm a Huntai Senkaku. If I'm in position for the traditional front triangle, and he does a good job of, of, of locking around my hip, right? He does a good job of defending. We're gonna control the posture and start to reach underneath the leg. From here, we utilize a swinging motion to get our hips off the mat and to get our knee facing towards the ground. From here, our right hand is replaced by our right knee. Again, this secures his position. Now, Sway goes to posture, which is his number one line of defense. It's completely uh, negated. We pull the shin nice and tight. We lock up the full on strangle. We get a tight finish. Okay. Let's give him a little bonus. So a little bonus if Sway, you do a good job. The guys, some guys have crazy strangle uh, defense or your angle's not quite as good. It's a great option. This is actually my go-to above the Hunt Tyson pocket. Uh, particularly because my knees aren't the best. Uh, on, on this side, it's very difficult for me to land in actual combat. Like, so oftentimes what I'll do is I'll find out I get here and I'm putting a lot of stress on my hips and my knees and I can't get it. I just go back to closing the guard. I just closed the high guard. But now I'm gonna raise my hips up. We're gonna attack the, the two on one, the basic Kimura. So I raise my hips off the ground, and let's say he keeps a strong grip, keep my heels back healing. I raise my hips off the ground, that exposes the wrist, right? From here, I put my hand on his, on his wrist, and I tighten my elbow to my body. This is the most important detail, that when I grab Sway's wrist, I never have a flare in my elbow. I'll lose all my leverage. If I tighten my elbow to my ribs, watch what happens when I lower my butt his hand immediately pops out. So it's a great uh, mechanical device to keep your body nice and tight. Not to flare the elbow. Flaring the elbow, you're gonna lose a certain degree of leverage. Once again, let's say whatever the case is, he's such a strong guy, you can't even angle properly for the triangle or you have issues with your knees. We're gonna back heel, bridge to the ceiling, reach for his wrist and tighten our elbow towards our body. Now the action of doing this and just lowering my hips and bringing my knees towards my face makes it so that the hand pops out immediately. From here, we swim through, we lock up the Kimura, and nothing's stopping us from getting a full-on break of the arm. Right from there. Let's just do that one last time. One last time, Hunt Tyson Cockle's not there. The guy does a great job of stifling my hip movement. I bridge, I bridge, connect my hand to the wrist, lower my elbow to my rib cage. Now, as my hips go down, my knees come to my face. Grip breaks. We web our hand through, we lock on the full-on Kimura, and now we, we go for the basic break. Now, a strong guy will posture from here, so make sure you're still back heeling, meaning you're driving your heels to your butt as you utilize this, this twisting motion, and you get a great win. All right? So that's the Hunt Tyson Kaku being our, our, a, our, I would say our primary choice, secondary choice being the Kimura, where you back heel and you control the guy's posture. Uh, both phenomenal. Like I said, my first option is typically the Kimura. It takes less dexterity and Less athleticism and less energy. It's a more efficient movement. So usually what I'll do is I'll go Kimura if the guy panics and lets go of his own wrist to try to pull his arm out, we go to the Hunt Tyson Cockpits. That's a good system we can use. Front triangle, Kimura, 
and hunt Tyson Conley. They work great together. All right, guys, make sure you guys subscribe, and we'll be back soon with another video. Thank you, guys.